Have you ever wanted to use Pixelmator Pro and work with multi-exposured bracketed photos and sort of blend them correctly? Now, many people will use different techniques uh, and they'll go through complicated methods to do this. There is an easy way to do this. Now, what I'm going to show you today is I, first of all, I use very specific kind of gear when it comes to landscape photography and when it comes to things like portrait photography. Now, what gear do I use? Well, first of all, it doesn't really matter what gear you use as long as you've got good lighting. That's the key to most photography. Now, I use a Nikon Z8 system with a number of lenses. For this particular demonstration, I'm actually going to show you photographs I've taken with my GFX 102, which is a phenomenal camera system uh, for landscapes and portraits. This is my ultimate medium format camera that I use, and I've got a 55 uh, millimeter one f1.7 on it. What I've done with this is I've taken four multi-exposure bracketed photos each one separated by one EV. So it's going to have a normal exposure. It's going to have two darkened exposures, a minus one EV and a minus two EV, and then a plus one EV, which will be pretty, pretty bright. And I like using four. I mean, you could do five if you really wanted to. Five is probably better. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you with Pixelmator what I do. Uh, bear with me while I take you through this. And it's really not complicated. I'm just going to um, activate uh, this environment quickly so you can see what's happening. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that you can see uh, Pixelmator as well and make sure you can see it correctly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the brightest layer that I have first. All right, I'll just say open with Pixelmator Pro. Now, I'm just going to make sure I align Pixelmator correctly so that you don't have the problem of seeing me only. There we go. It's about right now. You should be able to see everything in there plus myself. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to make sure that I can uh, pretty much see the necessary photos that I need to see when it comes to Mm, the the different layers that I want to work with. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take what I've got here and I've got the second brightest, well, the second darkest, I should say, exposure, which in this case is the correct exposure. So let's bring that in as a layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my second darkest layer underneath that and my absolute darkest layer underneath that. Now, if you bring it in and it all is in a different order, just set up the order like this so that you know you've got your darkest layer at the bottom. You have your second darkest layer just above that, your great exposure, your good exposure that you have within that. And then essentially uh, the brightest layer at the top so that you know you can work with these layers. So what am I going to do next? Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, all right, is we're going to do a couple of changes. I mean, you can see from if if I take, say, the brightest layer and I look at the brightest layer, you can actually see in Pixelmator the, the exposure uh, histograms too far. You can see that that exposure is pretty decent, right? But it's probably missing a little bit of the sky, a little bit of the details in the water, because that's the way I've taken. I've taken it as a multi-bracketed shot. Then a slightly darker image will be better on the left-hand side of the histogram, and a really dark image will be very close to the left-hand side altogether. So if you look at each one of the images, let me just turn off each one of the images. That's going to be the brighter image. That's going to be less, uh, well, less, well, the proper exposure. Then that's going to be a much darker image, and that's going to be the darkest image. So basically, we're going to have from the darkest image, we're going to go a little bit brighter, proper exposure, and we're going to handle the real big highlights through there. But we're going to work with these images for now. 
Now, we're going to do a couple of things, and this is my process flow and the way that I do this. You can follow in different methods, but I found that with landscapes, this works best, especially if you have cameras like, you know, the GFX 102, which is an insane piece of equipment, which has, you know, 102 megapixels per photo, because, you know, as you can see, when it comes to uh, the pixels, there's 208 megapixels in this one, 209 me uh, uh, megabytes, sorry, 208.8 megabytes, 209 megabytes, 209.6 megabytes, 209.7. Each one of these is 102 megapixels each. So that's huge. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I always work this way. I, I don't touch the bottom layer. There's no need to touch the darkest layer possible. You want to keep as much of that as you can, but I will work backwards. So I'll get the second darkest layer first. All right. What we're going to do is because that's at minus one EV, not minus two EV. So that one is uh, essentially we're going to change the blending mode. OK, you're going to see the blending modes here and they're all set to normal anyway by default. I'm going to change the blending mode for that one to lighten. OK, so you're going to go down to lighten and then we're going to drop that to 50 percent opacity. Yeah, just about 50 percent. Right. Then I'm going to go to my normal exposure. And I'm going to change that blending mode to screen so that it blends better with the other photos. And then once I've changed that to screen again, this one, we can change the opacity to 50% because we don't need major for that one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the brightest layer that I have, because obviously I don't want to blow out my highlights on this one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that blending mode to soft light. Okay, and we're going to go down here to soft light right there. Don't worry, we're not done yet. And we're going to change that to roughly about 50%. Now, it's already doing better. It's not perfect, but it's already doing better as an image with all of these four uh, uh, layers together. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of those. You can always make a composite of all these four layers and make a separate image out of this if you want. You know, you can use the, the keystrokes for that. But I'm going to just, it's, I don't care. This is a demonstration. I don't care if it's destructive at the moment. So I'm just going to go right click and just merge. Bang. And it's all merged. And you can see the pixels are massive now. It's 11,648 by 8,736. It's huge. Now, a couple of other changes I like making when it comes to my landscapes. It's not 100% perfect. You can see that isn't, okay? And I'm not zooming in yet. I don't like to zoom into photos very quickly in the beginning. Right, I'm going to go across to this histogram, and you can see the histogram is slightly tending towards the left, which makes sense because it's a little darker here. So that's okay. I'm going to play around with exposure levels a little bit here. I'm going to jump that up to, say, 69, 70% roughly it looks about right and i'll explain why i'm doing this the highlights i want to bring some of those clouds out i'll pick that up to say 20 let's see 22 percent that's about right maybe yeah 22 percent is about right shadows i'm not going to touch the shadows i don't want to bring out any noise from the shot okay i don't need to i will do a different technique for that then under brightness i need a little bit more brightness because i want to bring out the white areas of the image so let's bump that up a little bit let's do say 12 percent on that now here's where a lot of people go wrong with landscapes they push the contrast too high what you should do now is actually drop the contrasts because what it'll do is it'll produce better printed images if you want as well. So let's drop the contrast. Let's give it about minus 30 odd, somewhere around there. That's about right. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up the black point. I want to enhance all the black parts of the image. So in this case, uh, let's bump up the black point to quite a bit. Let's do... I'm pushing the black point quite a fair amount. Let's do 50, 
Oh, 51 looked pretty good. It might not be too visible on your side when it comes to your monitor or your whatever screen you're looking at in terms of YouTube, because YouTube does obviously compress the videos. Now, that all seems to be pretty much okay. I'm not going to play around with textual clarity. I don't need to do any of that. That, that image looks pretty good. It's well balanced on the left-hand side of this particular histogram. Pretty decent with a fall off on the right-hand side. So it's got a very nice setup in the middle. They're all pretty much nicely balanced. I will go down and I'm just going to show you something where it gets a little bit to 100% zoom. And I can zoom in and out and I can see, okay, that's pretty good. I need to find out where it was focusing. Of course, this is infinity focus. I need to do a little bit more of a change. I'm going to come down to the bottom here and I'm going to actually play around with a little bit of sharpness. Just a just a small amount. I'm going to use the default, right? There we go. It just it just gives it that extra little bit that needs it. So it's a little sparkle. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out again. Okay, just a little bit out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back down again. And I'm going to play around a little bit with my S curve. I want an S curve a little bit out here and a little bit in there. And now I've got a very nice little S. It's not too much of an S. That's a little bit better. That's about right. So that creates a little bit of darkness here, brings that out, has the lightness out there. It's actually a bit too far. Let me just bring it up a little bit there and a little bit in here. That's about right. And now we've got our image. It's really. It's as simple as that. Now, of course, if I take this image now and I export the image to that same folder, all right, that I have here, and I'm gonna go to my desktop here that I had, I'm gonna go to my, uh, where's my GFX that I have, my GFX system, and I have my little demo folder, there's my little demo folder. I'm going to export that image as a TIFF file. It's going to be 16 bit channel, which is crazy. It's going to be pretty decent in terms of pixels, you know, and it's got 549.7 megabytes. I mean, that would be absolute insanity when it comes to the idea of the size of the pixels. So it's four times 102 megapixels, which is insanity, all right? So if I export that out, that's very good, very cool. Let's minimize that. I've got myself a TIFF image that I can very quickly view and pause. It's gonna take a while to read and I've got a very powerful system and there we go. We've got our image. Now, of course, I think I can do a little bit better because as you can see when it's doing a preview, some of those buildings are way too white. I may have to drop the white brightness a little bit down, but there is a blended image of pretty much uh, multi-exposured system in terms of GFX using four images with multi-exposure bracketing and what the result looks like. And I mean, the result speaks for itself. I mean, you can see you've got an incredible image. And of course, I'm just doing a, um, a quick preview on it. If I wanted to now open this up, inside something say like any of any of my other programs i could do that but if i bring it back in to pixelmator pro you can get to see what this really looks like and uh, it is a tremendously cool photo and of course now i can zoom in and really really come to grips with what's happening here and you know it's doing a pretty decent job of course there's always a way to sharpen this even more if you wanted to i mean we could go even further with the sharpening if you really want to push it i mean i'm going to go and dig a little bit deeper here so let's let's zoom in a little bit more here i don't like doing two levels of sharpening i think that's a little bit too much but hey if you want to go to that level you know beauties in the eye of the beholder hey and if i do it one more time on there it just it goes a bit too much i mean it's nice but i think it goes a little bit too much i think it looks a little bit too false there so there we go we've got ourselves an image and we've got the multi-bracketed photo 
multi-exposure image that we can work with. And of course, you know, when you're looking at something like an image like this, let's maximize the screen over here so we can see what's going on here. And uh, I mean, that's just, a, you know, it's an incredible photo to see. It's multi-exposure. So basically, I've now managed to get that darkness of the water, which is what it looks like, really. I managed to pick up all the buildings and the right colors out of this. Did nothing with color, nothing with hue, nothing with saturation, none of that stuff. But I also brought out a little bit of that sky because I wanted to bring out some of those clouds, but not too far. You know, it's a beautiful day today, even though it's reasonably cold day today in Barry in South Wales, which is where this is taken. It was a wonderful day. So I went out walking and I took a number of photos with multi-bracketed shots. And uh, I just wanted to show you basically what you can do with something like Pixelmator Pro. And of course, what's really possible with something like the GFX 102, which of course, in this case, has created an ability to have <laughs> four images of 102 megapixels, making up a total of 400 an eight megapixel final image which looks pretty much insane okay now if i had to print that photo out believe me that would be quite an incredible photo to see and uh especially in print which i aim to do so and it's going to go on my wall because this was a particularly good day otherwise that was a very quick short little preview of the basic process flow that you can follow when it comes to blending the multi-exposures, it's really not complex. Inside Pixelmator Pro 2, or in this case, the version 2, which is basically the updated version that Apple's put out recently. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and uh, activate the notifications so that you know when I, when I bring out a new video. I'm trying to make sure that I keep sponsors away from this channel, and all you're going to be doing is supporting me. I don't have any sponsors for my channel, and uh, I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Thank you to all my subscribers who keep on following me. It's I'm humbled by your support. And once again, this is Demetrius here from Obi Pixel. Have a great day, everybody.